A few days ago, I posted a video that looked at hurricane and tropical storm and tropical depression tracks and U.S. counties. And I did that to produce layers like this, which showed the count of track intersections by county. So I could click on a county and see how many hurricane tracks uh, have intersected that county. So if you're interested in seeing these maps and seeing uh, that analysis, watch my other video. If you're interested in seeing how I was able to accomplish this using spatial join, this will be the video for you. So you can read the text in the video description to see all the methods. I'm just going to focus on how I use spatial join for this analysis. I don't plan on making a lot of videos like this, but I find spatial join is just such an important tool, so it's one that I want to make sure people know how to use well. You can find the spatial join tool if you go to analyses and bring up the tools or the geoprocessing pane and search for it, but it's also here in this, this gallery, which in the default tools, which just shows how important of a geoprocessing tool it is. So for target features, I'm going to choose counties. For join features, I'm going to choose tracks. A common question I get from students is which should be which between target features and join features. So what you want to think about there is uh, what layer, which features do you want to be talking about? So I want to talk about counties and how many tracks have intersected those counties. And so that's why the counties is the target feature. A good thing to do is actually try it both ways and then you'll really understand how the tool works. And I'll, I'll do that in this video too. And the output feature class is the file that's going to be created, so you can call it whatever you want. So uh, the default is it's going to be called counties underscore spatial join. Fine, I'll just leave the default for that. And it's going to be saved in the default geo database for the project I'm working in. The join operation is one to one or one to many. One to one is the default, that's probably what you're usually going to want. The one to many would, uh, for counties that have multiple tracks crossing them, it would in the output create multiple county polygons for each track that crosses it, but I don't want that. I just want one county polygon so that I can have the counts for tracks that intersect it. You can keep all the target features, meaning keep all the counties, whether or not a track crosses it or not, or you can uncheck that and it would only keep the counties that have that um, track intersecting it. So let's do that. That way I can um, just show the counties that have the intersection. And so I've already been talking about intersect a fair bit. So th the whole point of doing a spatial join is we're using a spatial relationship to bring information from one feature layer to another feature layer. In this case, we want information about the tracks, especially how many tracks intersect each county. And so this dropdown gives you all these other types of spatial relationships you can have. And so uh, intersect is probably a very common one. There's a pretty long list here. Uh, within a distance of is, is probably another commonly used one. If I did that, we could set a search distance, uh, pick the, the units we want to use, uh, such as uh, kilometers. And we could say, you know, 100 kilometer search radius. And so that would do is with the spatial join, it would uh, match all the tracks that are within 100 kilometers of a, a county uh, to put into the output feature layer. So could do that. I'm just going to do intersect though. So the tracks actually have to cross over the county for them to be counted in the spatial join. So go back to intersect. Uh, do remember there's these, this very handy information icon you can hover over if you want to read about all these other types of uh, matching options for spatial relationships to, to use in your spatial join. So I think it would just ignore this with intersect, but I'll put that back to zero again. Okay, the other part is this field section. I could, you know, not even open that. I could run it and it would work, but I want to explain all the parameters for the tool. And so if you expand the fields, you get this sort of confusing looking area. What this does is it lets you control what uh, fields you're going to have in your uh, output attribute table. So here we have a list. These are all fields that are in the counties feature layer that I have, like the name of the county, the name of the state, the abbreviation, some population information, and so on, the size, the length of the perimeter. And then there's also some additional fields added to the end of this list, which come from the tracks feature layer. So there's a storm ID 
field, uh, maximum wind speed for that track, the year that the storm occurred, and the length of the track. And so I think it's a nice idea sometimes to clean up things in here and you know I can remove fields that I'm not interested in. So you know in situations where there's multiple tracks crossing in single county, you know, I don't really, I'm not interested in the length. I'm mostly in interested in just the counts. And so I can remove uh, that field here and that will simplify the output. So for year, um, you know, if you only have one track crossing a county, then the year makes sense. But when you have multiple tracks crossing the county, you might want to pick a merge rule. And so I could pick a minimum and that would be the first year or the smallest number for year. So the earliest year that a track crossed the county or I could do a maximum. So that would be the latest year in this data set that uh, a track crossed the county. So well, I won't do that either, so I'm going to remove it. But I will show you one. So, so max wind speed. So I could do a, let's say I want to keep that and where I have multiple tracks crossing a state, I could say, well, let's, I might want to know what the maximum wind speed was. So I don't have information for all the wind speeds of all the tracks I cross, but I just want to, the maximum to be uh, preserved in the output. So let's look up there. So target counties, the join tracks, and it's going to create a new feature layer called counties spatial join. Let's try to run it. And it'll probably take a few minutes. So I'll open the, the details window here and I'll pause the recording, but I'll keep this open so I'll be able to show you how long it took. Okay, finished running, didn't take too long. On my desktop computer, it took one minute and 46 seconds to run. So let's have a look at it. So right now, you don't really see anything because it's showing as the same color as the other county layer. So I'm gonna change the color and I'll make it, I'll make it a real bright red so it stands out and apply. So remember, I chose the option to not keep all of the features. So it's only in this layer, it's only showing the counties that had an intersection with a hurricane track. That was uh, this option here to not keep all target features. So let's see what the attribute table looks like. All right, so I didn't show the attribute tables before we did the tool, but uh, this is, you know, most of these fields came from the counties feature layer, the state name and abbreviation and FIPS code and population, population density and area and so on. Uh, but then it added some additional fields. So it added that maximum US wind speed. So I know what was the maximum wind speed for that feature that crossed the county. And what else did I have? And on the far left, this is mostly what I was interested in, this join count field. And so that field tells me how many tracks intersected each county. So I sorted descending. Um, here we can see, so the most tracks were uh, 65 that intersected Monroe County in Florida. What's the attribute table? There's that county highlighted. Turn off tracks. Now we could do something like uh, graduated colors for our spatial join to make a map that was uh, like I showed you at the beginning of the video. Yeah. You can see that the field that the graduated colors are based on are that join count. So let me also show you what would happen if we did the spatial join, but we switched the counties and tracks around. So I'll make tracks the target features and counties the join features. Let's give it a different name. So I'll call it this time tracks. Spatial join. And we'll do the default one to one again. Uh, keep all target features. Let's not keep them again because then you'll really see how that worked when we look at the output. So we're only going to keep the tracks that intersect counties. We'll stick with the intersect for the match rule. And let's see, I'll reset the fields here. In the field list, you can see all the attributes for the counties as well as the attributes for the tracks. So here's where you might want to clean things up because one track can, can cross multiple counties. And so 
you know, you're not getting the full list, maybe it's worthwhile removing some of these fields. But I'll just leave them as is, and just to show you how that will look like in the output. So I'll let that run. I'll pause recording. Finished running. This time it took about four and a half minutes to run. If I toggle the, um, the underlying tracks layer on and off, you can see how we have fewer features. That's because it only kept tracks that intersected the counties. It didn't keep all the tracks. Often you would want to keep all the tracks. And in the attribute table, you would have null values for the information coming from the uh, counties. And you would have a, a join count of zero. So let's, let's uh, look at the pop-up for one of the tracks that crossed over lots of counties. And so here's the, the join count. So that means that track crossed 61 different counties. And you have information from counties, but it's only a single county. So we know it crossed Ashley County, but it crossed a lot of other counties as well. So it just kept Ashley because that was the uh, first, you know, by alphabetical, the first county name. So that's why you might want to go through that fields list and this isn't too useful of information, so you, you might want to remove those to simplify the output. One thing I could have done is I could have set a merge rule for sum of population, because that could be an interesting thing. You could see what the, the sum of the population of all the counties uh, crossed were, and then this would be, um, the sum would, would be found there. This is only the sum, the, the population for Ashley County, so that's something I should have done. That would have been a little, a little interesting. I could have, for population, select uh, sum there, and then it would sum up all the populations for the counties that were crossed. But I won't rerun that now. So you can see you get a very different thing depending on, you know, which feature layer you put on for target and which you put for the join features. In the second run of it, uh, I can say something about the tracks and how many counties they intersected. Whereas the other one, I got information about um, how many tracks crossed each individual county, which is really the thing that I wanted to do at the beginning to, to make this graduate color map. So the last thing I'll say is, uh, so in this example, I did uh, line features and polygons for the spatial join. You can do this with points as well. And you know I think it's a common thing to do is, is where you have polygons for the target features, like counties, and tracks, this is what I did originally. Uh, that's pretty common to have target features as, as polygons, and you're counting how many points or lines or, or other polygons in a different feature layer intersect or within a certain distance of the target features, but it certainly works with uh, line features, like I demonstrated, as well as points, and then often you'll be doing other types of match options, such as, you know, uh, within a distance, you know, how many points from one feature layer are within a certain distance of points within a different feature layer. So there's a lot of different things you can do with spatial join. It's definitely one of the most important tools to know in ArcGIS Pro. All right, thanks for watching.